this is a clip taken from I need to pause it here so it doesn't play automatically pause this is a clip taken from a guy called Ben Hurwitz comedian um, and this guy had a podcast with the one and only Malik B remember him Malik B the one I was trying to um what he, tr he tried to like game the system with the fucking fire and the kids subred it. He tried to make them fucking follow his account so he could expose the stuff that happened on the fire and the kid. Um, when he got kicked off and whatnot, or sacked, whatever it may be, and everyone kind of turned on him in the end, and then he ended up kind of disappearing. We haven't really heard much from the guy since. But he sat down on this guy's podcast and he revealed something that was absolutely insane. I didn't had no idea about this at all, so he should have probably revealed this probably sooner. But this is a wild fucking allegation that Malik has kind of leveled against Brendan Shaw and how he conducts his fucking um, podcast. This is fucking nuts. So it's a little clip here taken from this guy's Instagram account. So let's play it. Didn't they want you to say? Oh well, shit, we couldn't talk about Black Lives Matter. Oh, because it would be too polarizing for, for their audience? Yeah, for the audience, yeah. Yeah, that's a little, f I mean, you have two black guys on the show. <laughs> yeah. That's a little fucked up to say I can't even mention that. Because it's, it's all that anybody is talking about when you're doing the show. Right? And you're not allowed to say a word about it? At the end of the day, it's his show. Yes. So, who are you going to tell? You're not going to tell anyone, to like, yo, uh, you can't talk about this. Well, I think we should. It's his show. All right, cool. You do whatever you want to do. Even on the road, it's his show. I mean, I got a text where he was like, about to take me off his tour. I was like, all right, bro, cool. It's Why was he show. taking you off the tour? I don't know. He said I wasn't funny enough. <laughs> are you serious? I'm dead ass serious. He said I wasn't funny enough. So he just Brandon Schaub. Me. Yeah. Text me UFC like, fighter Brennan Schaub said you weren't funny enough. Bro, text me at like 10, I think it's like late at night. I'm laid up with my chick and I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. Whatever. I, I ain't paying any mind to it. I ain't really care. What didn't they? I love how people say they don't really care, but they clearly didn't care. Imagine being at home on a, and you're preparing to go out to a comedy spot and then you get a text an hour before your fucking set that you can't go on because the guy that's the most unfunniest comedian in the history of comedy says that you're not fucking funny. Imagine. Oh, big, big up, Uch, for the three dollars PM Chang fund. Big up, big up, big up. I appreciate you, honestly. But the Black Lives Matter thing is fucking wild, isn't it? If you think about it, no. I remember at the time because if you remember clearly. Brian Callan and Chris Lea got cancelled just before COVID, I think, hit. And just before the whole George Floyd thing happened, right? And then the protests around it. But that was a period in time, I think like a year, maybe two years, where the whole Black Lives Matter thing was a real poignant topic, especially in America. Maybe not in the UK, but in America, for sure, it was a big topic of discussion. So you hear people talking about it a lot in passing and podcasts, sometimes a bit, you know, redacted, and they wouldn't make great points about it. But it was definitely something you definitely hear them talking about. And you'd imagine... Especially on the Friday the Kid at the time, when um, Chappelle and Malik were on it, they would probably be quite interesting people to hear about all that stuff in it, because Chappelle's not your typical black guy, right? He did cheerleading. He got dotted by a white family. Um, he's into fucking hardcore bands and shit. It would be quite interesting to hear what he has to say about Black Lives Matter and you know police brutality in general. It would be quite interesting to hear it. Also, the same with Malik B, right? He's clearly from... Where's he from in LA? He's from Watts or something. He's from, like, a really bad neighbourhood. He's obviously seen some, interest, some interesting and bad shit in his life. He's done a bit of boxing. He's now trying to progress into the Hollywood thing. Those would actually be some interesting perspectives to get from the whole, Holly, from the whole Black Lives Matter thing, right? A guy that's had experience living with or in a predominantly white sort of neighbourhood and growing up around people who are maybe, you know, maybe non-black in that terms. And Malik, who's kind of trying to progress himself and make himself better by exploring yourself whatever it may be right and for some reason brendan didn't want to talk about it now personally for me my opinion i've always thought that for some reason i don't know what it is maybe it's the fact that brendan feels like you know yeah let's put it out there fuck it maybe right i think the i think the reason why brendan's always been a bit weird when it comes to black people has been because it stems back from his football days. Because I remember when I used to watch the show, again, this is from a fan. This is only a fan would know this shit. But I remember when he used to talk about his football career back in the day, he spoke about it with a lot of, especially when he wasn't really doing comedy series, he spoke about it with a lot of regret. Now he obviously tries to retcon it and tries to reinvent the story and he makes try to make it seem like he was always wanting to be a stand-up comedian and fucking Jim Carrey was my hero and all this fucking nonsense. But... In the early days of the Fire and the Kids subreddit, he was always adamant that he always wanted to be a professional football player. That was his dream. His dad was, you know, pushing him to do it. He wanted to do it, and you know, 
all his friends became um, professional. Who that guy he talks about? Someone called Kloppenstein or Kloppenstein, some American football player that became really successful too. That was always his career. And I feel like at the time when he was speaking about it, he was had a bit of a resentment in his heart that he didn't make it. And he feels like he didn't make it because a lot of the guys that basically made it ahead of him were really athletic black dudes, <laughs> right? Who took his position. And he's always had, I feel like, a bit of resentment about black athletes and black people in general because he feels like they didn't allow him to get to achieve his dream because maybe if he grew up in a neighborhood that wasn't maybe predominantly black or that you know you know in a team because imagine if you play football in a because I, mean, I don't know about anything about football but i'd imagine if you did play football in an area in america that wasn't predominantly black you probably have more chance to make it in that team because you don't have to compete against so many fucking freak athletes right or people that are susceptible to be good at fucking running and fucking running through people right or whatever or throwing a ball really far so he probably has a bit of a thing about it. And then if you fast forward, that weird comment that he made about fucking the UFC people, right? The commentators, when they had an all-black cast. And he was like, we get it, UFC. We get it. You want to be fucking inclusive. It was so weird and so out of the blue that it definitely made me feel like this guy definitely has some um, some uh, interesting opinions about black people, let's say, right? <laughs> That's what I'd say. I wouldn't go as far as saying he's a racist or whatever, but I definitely think he has a real weird way to eat interact with black and if you, if you remember the early episodes of the fire and a kid with malik b and Chappelle on it he was really odd with them i also remember when brian callum was on the show and brian callum would always talk about fucking um Ch no he'd always talk about malik brendan would always talk about it brendan wouldn't really respond really well he'd always kind of talk about malik with a bit of hate in his heart and i remember brian being like oh yeah malik there's this guy who i met who I'm, i wouldn't say mentoring but he kind of was like you know happy that he was kind of taking him under his wing, how talented he was, like, talking about how he's fit and he's got a six-pack and he looks amazing. and Whatever, you know, Brian does when he's kind of, you know, trying to pretend like he's not gay. <laughs> and I remember Brendan not responding well at all. He didn't really, you know, react well to it, try to basically act like, nah, I don't really care. Yeah, I mean, this guy, fuck him, who is he? Like, always was a little bit standoffish when it came to Malik. So which makes no, which was no surprise when he ended up firing him because I felt like he never liked Malik in the first place, which might explain why he liked Chappelle because Chappelle was like a fucking human Labrador. Do you know what I mean? He was basically, you know, he didn't really have any opinions of his own. He didn't really say anything interesting. Everything was a fucking surprise. He didn't know what fucking game of throw. Like, he just, you know what I mean? Just, I don't know what he does every day, but he didn't really seem like somebody that had many interests outside of what he likes, isn't it? In terms of bands, do fucking backflips and stuff or whatever else it may be. But I'm not surprised about this. I honestly am not surprised because I always felt like Brendan was a little bit weird when it came to the blacks. In my opinion, he kind of comes across like somebody that doesn't really spend a lot of time around black people, maybe doesn't like them, has some preconceived notions about them, went through a bad experience. I don't know, but there's definitely something there. And I think it comes, and I think it stems from the football days because he definitely, definitely went to be a professional footballer more than a comedian. And his dream was completely, you know, incinerated or stopped because of those really freakish athletic black dudes that were in front of him, you know, that obviously were picked before him in a team, blah, 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 blah. But still, absolutely nuts allegation to put out there i just wish malik would have said this stuff earlier on because it would have you know been far better for him but he was too scared and afraid to say anything and now you know many many years after the whole shebang and many things have passed he's now coming out and saying it which again if you're being a brendan fan you would say maybe it's a bit in poor taste that he's saying all this stuff now you know i mean what what is it helping to, to do and you know it's a bit you know it's a bit pointless um, it maybe seemed like he's trying to, on purpose, trying to bring him down in some way, shape, or form. Who knows? But still, I'm not surprised that Malik would say that. I got that impression anyway. And I just think it's nuts that he would stop them to talking about Black Lives Matter. But hey, what do I know? Um, Malik got fired after Malik memed Shaw on Tifa K. That was generally a funny moment. Shaw couldn't have funny stuff on there. True. Kuche says, ironically, they both married Latina women. Oh, really? Is a Malik is Malik's wife Latina? Okay, I thought she was like... Um, um, you know, what you call it? Texas white, like a white, white lady. Which is a Shaw and Chris, the Stefano often mentioned how they prefer type is black chicks. Yeah, it's very true. Yeah, I'm I'm sure Brendan doesn't mind a black chick, I'm sure, but I'm, I definitely don't think he likes black men, for sure, no way. Um, Shaw was trying to ride the right wing grift at all times. If Chappelle and Malik started talking seriously about BLM, they would have lost half the audience. Yeah, true. Yeah, but Brendan's not right wing. He hasn't got the balls to be right wing. He tries to present to be right wing and to have that grift, but he doesn't really have any opinions that he was willing to stand on. Even the COVID stuff, 
he's a bit pussy to say, I'm not vaccinated, I don't believe in vaccinations, I believe it's fucking mind control, um, it's the government overstepping on our liberty. He doesn't say any of the fucking talking points that a right-wing person would say. He doesn't stand on anything. He just is pussy to say it and then just kind of hides behind some certain things. Um, so yeah, the grift is nothing. Uh, I haven't seen this. So the, he's Magnet Thatcher says he's only feels because he sees himself in man But yeah, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Um, Martin Moose says he was grifting. He's not right or left. He's full-blown redacted. Yeah, true. Uh, <laughs> oh, cool. Okay, Uche is not talking about Malik. Okay, cool. I thought, uh, cause I'm, I'm pretty sure I remember Malik saying he was married to some white lady. But maybe I could be wrong. I don't know. Who fucking cares? 